Hello everyone, welcome to Game Tech UK and another in my series of I buy it so you don't have to. So let's get on with today's video. The game we're looking at today is called Forklift 24. It's available on the PlayStation. There's a PlayStation 4 enhanced version and there is a PlayStation 5 version as well, which I will be showing here in this video. And it is developed and published by one single person. So what does the PlayStation Store say about Forklift 24? Well, it says get ready to take on the ultimate Forklift simulation experience with Forklift 2024 The Simulation. Operate your very own Forklift and complete randomly generated orders to earn money and expand your warehouse. With a variety of goods to handle and increasing complexity as you progress, this game will keep you on your toes. But that's not all. Challenge yourself even further with the exciting challenge mode featuring five different puzzles and labyrinths to navigate through, transport goods from start to finish and put your skills to the test. With stunning graphics, realistic physics and intuitive controls, Forklift 2024 The Simulation is the perfect game for both casual and serious gamers alike. Expand your warehouse, master your forklift skills and conquer the challenges all in one incredible game. Don't miss out on this thrilling forklift simulation. Grab Forklift 2024 The Simulation today and get ready to lift and transport your way to success. Priced at $11.99, which is reasonable given the information we've just read. Ordinarily, I would have a trailer playing at that point as well to give you an idea about what the developer is trying to put forward to the player. But there isn't one. This is all the information we've got to go on. So let's get into the game and have a look. Every time you play the game, this is your welcome screen. So the first time you go in, you've got no idea what these icons actually are and you're presented with this every time you go into the game. Obviously the option on the right is options. So if we go in there, you can change your language. There's quite a few languages. For those that like to, you can invert the camera. You've got a gamma option and you've got ray tracing, which is labeled as false or true. Obviously true is on. Um, the middle one, again, it doesn't tell you, but the middle one is for those five different challenges Challenges. There's only five that I told you about in the first one. The problem here, once you go to this screen, there's no option to go back. So the only way around it is to actually choose one of these options. So the main game is hidden behind that first icon, like a play button. So let's get in there and let's see what we're presented with. Well, we're presented with our warehouse. This is where we're going to be working. This is where the entire game is based in this warehouse. And you're presented with a procedurally generated order each time, or each and every time. They're always different, obviously based around the same gameplay loop. But the actual items that you need to put into the truck is always different. Over on the left is the controls. Now they're always on the screen, but what's not on the screen all the time is this list. You only get that list if you actually go and look at the door. I wish they would just stop it. So you don't have to have the controls, which are very, very easy. And you could somehow pin the shopping list. It's so annoying because there's so many to remember that half the time you're, you're oh, I've got to go back. How many engine parts do I need? How many electrical parts? I actually resorted, I've done about five hours on this. I actually resorted to taking a picture of it on my phone so I could just very quickly there rather than going to look at the door. Um, this is our forklift trunk. There's no driver, which is really strange and such a shame. I mean, would it have been that hard to make an animated driver? Um, so it is ghost ridden by you, the player, if you like. But the accelerator goes down, the brake doesn't move. But the accelerator does go down, rear wheel steering, the actual camera controls are all pretty good. There's a lot of ghosting in the graphics, um, which I will show you in a second. But overall, you know, it's a forklift, forklift game and, you know, the forklift part of it is pretty good. You can use the D-pad to um, actually control your forklift which is very intuitive there's nothing wrong with the controls so there's no reason to have the controls pinned up there all the time but the only way you get the shopping list is to come over to the current door and actually um, have a look at the list there it'd be so much better if that could be pinned there's various doors throughout the warehouse, so you do have to make sure you get the right door and the arrow is pointed directly at the door that you've got to deliver your shopping list to. And all doors will open when you drive up to them, so you just need to make sure that you deliver them to the right door. And the door opens up onto what looks like a truck, and you can see a little bit of life out there. Can you see? If you look out the window, you can see cars pulling past. You never see outside any more than that, but... 
it's um it's frustrating because there is a city out there of some sort so it gives you a little bit of sort of immersion that you're working in this warehouse you've got the trucks pulling up that part of it is all good so let's have a look at the actual gameplay loop so the idea of the game is to get your shopping list loaded into the truck there's no time factor so it's not like you've got to do it as quick as possible you could take all day about it so that is good and bad depending on what sort of challenge you're looking for and the only way to go and find your shopping list once you hover over the door is um to go and have a look around now you can see there's a lot of graphical clipping in this game camera clipping i think is more than graphical clipping and i understand why it's because obviously whenever you turn the camera you know there is <laughs> there, there is always something in the way so i understand that but that can get a little bit annoying the stock in the warehouse isn't labelled in any way. Once you've played it for a few hours, some of them will get stuck in your mind. You'll know what the chemicals look like or what the tools look like. But to start with, if you think of your two forks as almost like a mouse pointer, you can go and almost point at stock and find out what it is. So here, for example, we'll point at these using our forks and it will tell us that it's still barrels uh, that that goes for the, the the actual stock on the top as well so all you'd need to do is move that up and imagine your forks is like a mouse pointer it will tell us that that is engine parts so You've got to do that for the entire warehouse. Everything, that's the challenge. That's the gameplay loop. You can see that camera clipping as well. That's that's the challenge, is to try and remember where everything is. Once you know where everything is, it takes a little bit of the challenge away. I think the first few hours of this was like, right, oh, I think that's engine parts. Oh, no, it's not. It's a canister. So that part of it is how you actually identify stuff in the warehouse. As you can see from the list, we do need engine parts. So we will concentrate on picking one of these up. So we're going to go up on the D-pad just to get there up. Now, you can press triangle and your camera, there's only two camera views. There's the, the third person. Uh, there is no first person. But if you press camera, your camera point goes to the end of the forks, which is pretty helpful, actually. So it does enable you to line everything up. We're just going to drive forward. Um, we're going to... Just move that in there. Going forward. We need to go up a little bit more. That's it. Back to triangle for the third person view. Uh, pick it up a little bit. Now we're going to reverse back. And you have to be careful because there is physics involved. You can tip it over. There isn't a reset button. So you have to sort of um, use the uh, bit like a turtle upside down. You have to use the forks to actually get yourself back up. But we're going to put that down so we're not top heavy. Also, if you press uh, square, you can get out and walk around, which is pretty good. Um, it's it's pretty good. It walks around. The only thing that I would like is, um, you know, like when you press the forks against an item, it tells you what it is. It would be a lot easier if you could just jump out of your um, forklift, go up to there and see what that is manually walking around. It would be a lot quicker. So we're just going to position ourselves in, give ourselves plenty of room. If you press circle, you've got a torch as well. So when it gets, when you go up the other end of the truck um, sort of a container, it does get quite dark. Uh, and again, you could go that view if you wanted to. Um, but yes, you can move that down. You should be able to move in there. You can see the sort of ghosting of the graphics by the blue outline. I think that's causing a lot of performance issues, actually. Um, it's running at around 30 frames. Um, but yes, we can put this up the end. You don't need to position it anywhere. You can just put it in wherever you want. And then you can drop down. It does get a little bit finicky. Actually, it's perfect that time. Sometimes I spent about 10 minutes trying to drop it off, tilt it straight. It drags it back a little bit. But yeah, that one went in totally fine. And you can see from the shopping list, engine parts is one out of one. And that essentially in that sort of 30 seconds is the entire gameplay loop of this game. I'll show you another item, but it will be exactly the same. So we need electrical parts. And I know offhand off the top of my head that this is electrical parts. So we will um, get in there and do this one. Again, let's put the camera to the front of the forks. So we need to go down a little bit. Sounds pretty good. I mean, it all sounds good. There we go, up a little bit more. Usually when I get into about that depth, we go back to the third person 
we can lift it up. That's electrical parts. The rear wheel steering is very cool for getting around a warehouse like this. You can see why um, that's uh, primarily used. So we've put that back down so we can fit into the container very nicely. And you can see on the list, electrical parts. We only need one of those. So we've got the, the lights on so we can see exactly where we're going. Uh, let's see whether we can um, drop this down as cleanly as we did the first one. So we'll put that down now. <laughs> it's, uh, every time, it's fine, it's fine. It's probably because I've been practicing about five hours I've been playing it. But that's the electrical part. So without showing you any more, it would be exactly the same process for absolutely everything. Uh, you get to know that's canisters on the right. The green one is a food package. There are roadblocks over on the left. That's that's bricks in front of me. You've got cement there. So the more you play it, the more um, that's road salt. The more you play it, the more familiar you get with it. And you do get a little bit of sort of, it's quite nice once you get familiar, you know, it might come up. Food packages for, I know exactly where they are. So that part of it is quite cool you have got these other doors but uh oh well look, hang on a minute hang on what you can go outside if there's not a truck there i did oh cool i did not know this i did not know this okay well that's pretty good i didn't know this and there's a railway outside as well awesome <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. That's brilliant. Oh, I'm glad I, I uh, discovered that on camera. That's good. How far can we go? Yeah, this is this is this is getting better. And there was me just peering over the top of one of the containers. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can go anywhere else, but that's pretty good. I mean, it's all set up for yeah, we've got the um in invisible wall there. It's all set up for quite a good game. Unfortunately, that's where the potential ends. What I've just shown you there is the entire game loop, as I keep saying. I can't stress enough how small that game loop is. I mean, you're in the same warehouse. It's just a truck. You fill it up and you receive, I think it's about £100 per stack. So on that large um, order we were just doing, we'd get probably around five, dollars $600 in credit. The only way you can spend that is in enhancing your workshop, which I have done once. Stage one you get, stage two is 2500 I managed to grind away at that. The next is 15000 So there's going to be a lot of grinding before we can further upgrade the warehouse. Upgrading your warehouse doesn't particularly do anything. It just adds another warehouse area to locate more stock in. And very, very quickly, the game becomes a bit of a sort of hide and seek of the materials that you're looking for. You think, oh, I know where that is. And you go and get it. And then you have to remember which door it is you're delivering to. That part of it might suit a lot of people. It's quite a relaxing game. Like I say, there is no timer. I think the game would be better with some kind of timer, even if it was a per item timer for an extra bonus but the game has got potential but like I always say we're not buying potential we're buying the product and the product that's available is unfortunately very underwhelming that's not to say it's a bad game it's actually quite a looker at times it looks absolutely comfortable in its own skin and it looks good compared to other similar games on console it's designed by one person Daniel Wengengraf now he's quite a prolific developer and he seems to publish them themselves so my hat is taken off to him and like I say he's got a lot of titles here that he's done and self-published on the PlayStation 5 as well I was under the impression that publishing games onto console was a bit of a rigmarole and we get indie developers in here that release games on PC and say well it depends on how it does and how big the team is but Daniel seems to have gone straight for the PlayStation 5 um, port or, or the release which I think is absolutely fantastic so my hat's off to him for putting together this game I just think it would have been better handing over to a publisher like Astragon, Green Man Gaming, who could guide this into a much more complex game. Like you just saw a second ago, you've got the railway outside. We could have loads arriving. This game could have been so, so much better. And that part of it is really disappointing. So let's go in and have a look at the five challenges that I showed you earlier. We'll start with challenge one.
Now, this piqued my interest because as much as I hate mazes, and let me tell you, I really genuinely do not like a maze. I think they're a total waste of time. But there is a maze set up, and you've got to pick up this plywood and take it through the maze um, and drop it off over there. Now, you have got physics involved. You have to be very, very careful. We can just tilt that back a little bit. Um, you have to be ve very, very careful. Um, otherwise, you will slide it off one end. So we'll just take this all the way over. And you can see we need to lower it to get underneath this bridge. Um, but you can see that there's the start of a sort of... Um, it's the start of a challenging game in this particular game mode. But unfortunately, there is only five challenges. It's like, you know, Daniel's done five and just thought, I just need to release this. I'm spending too much time on it. That's what it comes across like anyway. I'm sure that's not true, but that's certainly what it comes across like. So, yes, we uh, we just drop this over here. And again, if you stop too sharply, the plywood is going to fall off. You don't even have to actually um, land it on onto the... the, the uh, the supports though you just get there and that's it that's it there are five other achievements actually for completing them i've done one two and three but it just chucks you back to the menu and the very first time you do get that achievement now it's not until i got to challenge three where there was some out of the box thinking for the gameplay and i was quite sort of taken with it and that is it carries on the theme of the maze which i really dislike but you can't fit through the doorway up there you just can't fit in as you can see so what you need to do is somehow push this over there and collect it on the other side now it took me a while i think it's out of the box thinking and it turns it less into a simulator and more into a puzzler but that in number three is the only time i encountered it so again another wasted opportunity and i think that's the theme of the game for me just disappointment in what it could be um it's developed by one person published by one person i think he's done a fantastic job in doing that you know bigger teams can't manage to do that and it is bug free there's no bugs as such there's some optimization needed but there is literally a nothing game here imagine if the developers or publishers for gas station simulator got hold of this and you had trains turning up you had to unload them you had more than one lorry at a time to load you had customers at the front sort of desk wanting to buy stuff off the shelf so much potential in this game and none of it is realized so I suppose the next question is, is it worth $11.99? Well, considering it's on PlayStation, it's a console game, at $11.99, I actually, I don't mind it. There will be a few people that will actually like the gameplay loop, the easiness of it, the lack of a time sort of uh, constraint to get to, the fact that it's just really easy to play and you can earn money and just play it and it's always procedurally generated. I think there are quite a few people that probably would enjoy enjoy it. it's certainly not a no buy for me but on the other hand it's not something i would recommend based on the gameplay in here as long as you know what you're getting into 11.99 it's not expensive is it to keep daniel in a job and hopefully he goes back to it and makes certain improvements so there you have it. I hope if you've seen this on the store and you've searched for a video and you've come across my video, I hope it's given you the information you need to make that purchase decision. Also, let me know if you like this series. I buy it so you don't have to. I'd love to know in the comments section below. But that is it, everyone. Have a lovely day and I will see you in the next one.